experience 24 hours in the full frontal cut and thrust bring a bottle world of the fringe. I've been coming to Edinburgh every summer for 15 years for the festival fringe. I'm a fringe junkie hooked on an intoxicating cocktail of opposites, brilliant and terrible, bizarre and banal, drenched and indoors. But I'm long past drinking 19 pints of lager every day for a fortnight, so this year I'm here for just 24 hours. Thirty in the morning. Edinburgh, Edinburgh, Edinburgh. Lovely to be here at this time of year, when a little piece of Scotland is forever England. Yeah. And it's going to be many hours before I see something I like, like these guys. We're sorry if you're not pleased. If you can't translate Kelvin We know we sound Anglified, but we're Caledonians inside. What do we need at a temperature for? Their complaints just make us go gar gar south of the border. They think that we're freaky. Cause we're as Scottish as a tin of banks of Scotch and Leaky. Yes, we're as Scottish as a tin of banks of Scotch and Leaky. Yes, we're as Scottish as a tin of banks of Scotch and Leaky. Eeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeeee
Oh. It's better, because, oh, because, you know, you've got to be careful what you drink. Um, you know, if, if, if you get heavily drunk at night, for example, if, if you get drunk on Perno and you drink water the next morning, it makes you drunk again straight away. Mm. And I find the same with brandy, actually. If you get drunk on Perno and drink brandy the next morning, pissed as a fart straight away. It's quite a good night, actually. Have you had breakfast? <laughs> no, I haven't. Uh, do you want a chip at all? No, Get thanks. Sorry. Um, it's traditional up here, apparently. <laughs> now, I've got a lot of shows to see today, so oh, could, yeah. do you think you could do the show? Yeah, I will. Sorry, I'm just, I'm just feeling a bit rough. Um, yeah. What, what I do, it, it's um, it, it's a, quite an avant-garde piece. Yeah. It's a dialogue between James Joyce and Racine on the conflict between experimentalism and formal structure in art. Really? Yeah, well, there's not many laughs in it, obviously, but at least it's all in English, <laughs> right. apart from Racine's bits, obviously. And uh, mm. I have found that Sylvia Plath monologues are very popular shows at arts festivals around the world. Now, so I've written a Sylvia Plath monologue for myself. Yeah. Though that usually works best if there's a gas cooker in the room. Anyhow, look, right. uh, can you pass me some clothes and I'll uh, yeah. get up and get some, some, sort of a white Armani uh, suit with curry stains down it? I don't think there's anything here, actually. Oh, well, uh, well I'm not doing it in the nude, <laughs> obviously. It's not the sort of thing that wins you a fringe first. Actually, it's probably exactly the sort of thing to win a fringe first. Wait, can you lend me something? Yeah, sure, help yourself. Let's sure. get this. Oh, hi. hi, Barry. Um, it's, uh, yeah, I, I've just checked in, um, but unfortunately I've got caught up in some sort of fringe event here. And, um, and so I'll be, over in, uh, I'll be over in a short while. Yeah. See you later. Bye-bye. Taking up my invitation for coffee with Vary Mackenzie Robinson, the fringe administrator, I was able to decline Pete McCarthy's offer of breakfast one part Alka-Seltzer to 78 parts Carlsberg Special and set off for the Fringe office. Jonathan Miller once said that Fringe going is rather like playing the fruit machines at Las Vegas. You don't get much luck, but every now and then you suddenly hit a bonanza. In the street, the choices multiply. At every step, underfed artistes thrust brightly coloured junk mail into your fist. The Fringe is so gigantic, traditional advertising methods are simply not enough. Judging Wendy Peters, one woman show from Canada, not just traveling around the world. Very exciting, very exciting God. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, it's probably well, well known for being one of the largest arts festival in, well, in the world. And this year there are 473 companies, 913 shows, probably something like 8,500 to 9,000 performances by Saturday night. And we're going to sell 125,000 tickets from this office in five weeks. Do you know who sold the least tickets this year? I don't, actually. Um, well, it can be a pathetic number. It can be it? very, very small. I mean, some people get a cheque at the you know, end of September for £3.51, um, which is terribly depressing. In fact, I have purposely not really gone to look to who's done the worst business this year because it's just... It's so goddamn disheartening. I hate it. We're a professional theatre company. Really? Cover all of West Yorkshire. A community theatre company. Okay. It goes to people who don't normally see it. It's six till seven, so we've had time to go into something else afterwards. All right. Thanks okay. very much. I'll try to get out of Exciting new tragedy comedy from Liverpool. Brilliant, I'm in it. Are you? Yeah. What, what are you, the tragedy or the comedy? Both. Yeah. Very nice eyes. The principle of this exercise is to avoid being given leaflets by people who come up to you in the street. Now, with the stupid, <laughs> the stupid movements that I've taught you, and the running on the spot, <laughs> not one of you should take a leaflet. You should manage to get away. I will try and give you one. You should get away without being given one. So here it goes. Would you like a leaflet? <laughs> That's right, very good. Oh, sir. Oh, don't I know you from somewhere? <laughs> yes, the Scotsman came in yesterday. He gave us a very good review. Desperate companies will do virtually anything to get your attention. One year, a three-man theatre group appeared nightly in a parked Cortina. Unfortunately, only one spare seat remained for the public, so they went where most fringe groups go, into the bin. One oeuvre this year, playing to a fan club tinier than David Owens, is reputed to have lost its producer, 40,000 pounds. By mid-morning, it was time to take in the first proper show. Two Tigers is a musical about the life of Catherine Mansfield. Unfortunately, until the show, I'd never been quite sure who she was. Afterwards, I was convinced I didn't know who she was. As I understand it, though, Mansfield, whoever she was, leaves New Zealand, moves to London, and is introduced to a famous sculptor. 
she catches gonorrhea. She catches consumption, probably off the cold floor. Then she meets D.H. Lawrence, writes some books, and retires to France. Here, she dies, and not a moment too soon. In this excerpt, her Bloomsbury friends discuss her illness and her literary achievements. I hear the captain's got it. Did the doctor finally spot it? Hard on you. Pardon if my act was something. Does she think that these consultants are supposed to do? It's quite the common trend I find. So many of my friends have got a spotty lung or two. As far as I'm concerned, she deserves tuberculosis and a stew. She suffers gonorrhea and her tell from those who see her, but I never like to cry. Who cares? She's no better than a reptile. I hope she'll die. Oh, red hammer. What did you think of the show? I think it goes on a bit. Right. I think it's, I mean, it was three and a quarter hours. It's now, what is it, just under two hours. And it needs some trimming. And I'm sure they'd be the first to accept that. Yes, I, I, they were when I talked to them. But it's something that, that interests me about it. I've just had an impassioned conversation with a guy who said he thought it was the worst thing he had ever seen in all the fringes he's ever been to. And yet, on the way out of the theatre, there was a woman behind me who said it was brilliant, absolutely brilliant, the best thing I've ever seen. Now, that, to me, is the fringe in miniature, in a way. Um, I, I'm sure it's got all those elements, yes. I think it's got what, some of the worst things you could see on the fringe. Um, I think it also has some of the best. Somebody's worked very hard, put something together um, they, by their artistic standards. It has a set, and you don't get many things that do on the fringe. Uh, it has a, a lot of people who work terribly hard. It's got some very pretty songs. It's not a thing I personally would make a musical about. The Pavilions, High Street, Birmingham. It's your kind of shopping. Do you drink that all the time? Not uh, all the time. One percent alcohol, one hundred percent tenants. And it, you do need something just to moisten the bread a little bit, mm -hmm. and that's where stalk comes in. It holds into the sandwich size. together Don't really well, doesn't it? Yeah. Sandwiches, stalk. I mean, you can <clears throat> spread it. Nice and thinly, that's and you right. get the filling. That's well, it's right. light. It's so light. This is the yeah. 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 That's yeah. Like the flavour of the food that you're mm -hmm. you're serving. It's not taken you really, over. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's a lovely taste. Mm -hmm. It's very nice, But it enhances it? the flavour yeah, of lovely. what Inside. you want to taste. This mm. is the thing. So, are we really going through with it? We have to. Things have gone too far. OK. Just so long as you fully understand the implications. Oh, I think I understand. So there we are. It's settled. Well, now that we're in business together, is this my company car or yours? The new generation Renault 25. There's more to life with Renault. Imagine this is a high-performance engine. Put in an ordinary multigrade. Imagine this is an identical engine. Put in Mobile One synthetic motor oil. 
Start them up. Now, temperatures in some parts of your engine could reach 295 degrees centigrade if driven to extremes. But when you see that eventually something like this can happen to an ordinary multigrade, the case for Mobile One is pretty clear. Our prize present the best of Al Green. Highlight the story of a soul sensation. Spellbinding. Smoldering. Let's stay together. Superb. Highlight the best of Al Green. For all the best albums, cassettes, and CDs, pop into your local Our Prize. Georgian Edinburgh is rich in airy flats, occupied for 11 months of the year by architects and lawyers, which in August bulge with new wave comedians. Typically, in my experience, they always seem to rent the fifth floor, but I climbed up to take tea with a nest of them. Kit Hollerbach and Jeremy Hardy are stand-up comics who happen to be married. Jeremy has just won the Perrier Award, the Fringe's <laughs> top comedy accolade. What, what have you seen this year that you've liked? Is there anything good on? I saw um, a very good Sylvia Plath thing. I know oh, that you're very keen on Sylvia Plath. There's five of them. So two, yes. And I, I've, I've read this from run. cover to cover. Uh, I take this to, to, to shows. I take this to university reviews to read, to cheer me up during the Footlights review, or to read that kind of thing. But I went to see Johnny Panic and the Bible of Dreams by Theatre Cocktail, and that was brilliant. And I went to see Kid Stuff by Julie Forsyth, and that was brilliant. And I went to see Circus Souls, who made me feel a complete git because they're so. What about my good. reviews? That's it. <coughs> I went to see that Kid, was Kid's show, too. which was which was all. You know, it was really good. <laughs> I saw um, Jules Holland and his big band, and that was fabulous. It was really fun. How many are in the big band? Well, it's not really big band. <laughs> it's only four of them. <laughs> but it sounds really big. It sounds like there's like 40. It's wonderful. Really good fun. Flats like these are always full of slightly more people than there ought to be, coming and going at all hours. Today. Arthur, you've been out sneaking around all night long at the Gilded Balloon, no less, <laughs> looking for chicks. Alley yeah. catting around. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Yeah. No, I went oh. for a pint with a Belgian mime artist. One thing led to another, and here I am. Hello, John, how are you? Hello, Brian. That's my tea, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is there? Oh, right. Cheers. Have you got an ashtray? Yeah. Oh, well, uh, she, I can like a plain clothes policeman, Brian. <laughs> I'm not in your carnival. Oh, no. You're about to ask, ask us if we've got any reefers that you can smoke. Have score. we got any reefers? No, we mustn't say that on television. They yeah, have these paracetamol. These are harmless drugs that all the family can oh, use and no. enjoy. This is not civilized. Look at that. Everything's untidy now. I hate that. How many fringes have you been to, Jeremy? Five. <laughs> Thank you. That's one hundred. It's still a hundred, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, Eleven. Time. Eleven. But I don't think Roger McGough's done 25. No, 26 this year. <laughs> I don't think I can that's take my that. my eleventh fact. It's a miracle. I've spent nearly a year of my life at the end well, of the you still haven't won the Perrier Award. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't exist the first eight years, I don't think. Oh, oh, it's it's oh, 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 it's Oh, Jeremy. Oh, hello, Mark. Oh, chair. There you go. I mean, it's naturally slotted in the way that one normally does, isn't it? Oh, right. right. um, yeah. Uh, John? I'm John. Hi. That's Mark uh, Steele. There's yeah. another comedian. He hasn't won the Perrier Award either. <laughs> no, but I was on the panel to give out an award to the worst show in Edinburgh. Well, well that's about that much. <laughs> which went to a marvellous show, which I'd recommend. It's going to be transferring to the West End in London now, I think, now that it's got the prestige, <coughs> which is called Jean de Toilette uh, by the London Hospital Medical Review. Oh, yeah, give them some more publicity. A, a, a wonderful example of an hour's entertainment without a single joke or a single <laughs> laugh, and it's quite yeah, but As I understand the snake bite awards for the worst show in the Fringe, only one show was seen. And it was that one. No, it didn't go in the other <laughs> one. <laughs> oh. <laughs> job. Which is a shame, but... <laughs> no, this is quite frighteningly bad, the show Jean de Toilette. And, uh, and the only, the only worrying yeah. part about it is that in two or three years' time, these people are going to be performing liver transplants. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully not using any of the same material. probably two wearing guys. suspenders <laughs> and singing a colossal band, Sam and Berkeley Square. <laughs> 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 
Arthur Smith, also known as Brian, supplements his income as a stand-up comic by giving cultural tours of Edinburgh for beer money. He's a veritable landmine of information about the city. What's this, um, what's this building here? I don't know, it's some old church, isn't it? I thought it was St. Giles Cathedral. Oh, yes, yes, yes. This, yes, this is St. Giles Cathedral. Yes, this is where uh, Muriel was grey, was crowned King of Scots. Muriel, King of Scots. Curiously enough, she was born just over there. Uh, and he used to share a flat next door to Billy Bremner, Graham Souness, and Robbie Burns. They all lived in the same, uh, same apartments up there, actually. Mm. It's, uh, it's a beautiful city, Edinburgh, the Athens of the North, or as Tom Stovar called it, the Reykjavik of the South. I think of it as the Ulam Butor of the West myself. Now, if you look over, if you look up there, you see that? Yeah. That's my finger. Ha <laughs> Now, uh, as we move now, here, for example, we see a band of typical Scots people out no, enjoying no, the. No, no, no. No? no? You're not typical Scots. No, American and English. You don't sound very American to me. Well, I'm Scotch enough, I mean. You're in English. Talk to me if you want to talk about America. I don't, frankly. <laughs> Moving on here, we find that over there, for example, is that's where they used to tip their sewage out the windows. They didn't have sewage in those days, and they used to accompany it with the famous old Scottish cry, watch out, I'm pouring piss on your head. Uh, here, now, this is the heart of Midlothian. Here, have you heard of that? No, well, I've heard of it. I thought it was a football club. Well, it is a football club. They're sort of buried underneath, I think. They don't ever get any crowds. But this, what you're supposed to do here is gob into the middle of that for luck. You know, in most countries, they are. Look, someone, someone's just it's done it. There you go. Have a good old grolly, and if you've got your lucky knickers on, and you gob in there. Ah, good lord. Another great Edinburgh monument. Oh, there there yeah. This is the great Craig Ferguson. This Lee Evans, John Lloyd, Apple Smith. Please do the show with me. I'll say with him. You've just put your foot in. Fringe addicts see people in Edinburgh year after year that they never encounter anywhere else. There's the same kind of long-distance Freemasonry that exists between naval officers, recovering alcoholics, and those bearded, badly drawn loonies you see crawling towards each other in cartoon deserts. And every year, the club membership expands. No, it's my very first time. Is it? Yes, and it's a fine place. You see that pub up there? That's Deacon Brodie. Now, that's a very interesting pub. Why is that? Yeah. I don't know, it's someone's <laughs> office. Let's go look at it. Yes, yeah. why not? It, it, no, it was actually named after Robert Louis Robert Louis Simpson's Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. I'm At festival time, you get soaked by four kinds of wet. Beer, rain, sweat and mime. And the greatest of these is beer. Edinburgh's bars have been open all day a lot longer than England's. And in them, you meet people from all walks of life. In one pub, I met an American couple based in Holland, Paula Patterson, who's an artist, and her husband, Major Russell Patterson, who refuels nuclear bombers for a living. Have you ever been to the French before? Yes, many times. So how, how long have you been here? Since, since 1979. We missed two years. Yeah. Really? Which were those? Do you remember? Uh, 19... 85 and 86. Yeah. How do you choose what you see? Do you read well, actually, the Scotsman? Actually, we, get, we take the fringe uh, booklet right. and uh, we make a gigantic matrix of uh, all the different things we want to see. We'll put a little... Uh, like one check for something that we want to see, two checks by something we definitely want to see, and then we'll write all of these down. And then we make a matrix and see, okay, well, this show is, we have a, you know, a must-see from uh, two to four, and then, you know, we start from there. And it's, we spend several hours, we book all of our tickets in advance. Do you, you kind of specialize in what sort of shows you see? Yeah. Yeah. Political plays. Political yeah. plays? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, which which kind of politics, or don't you mind? It, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't matter. The right wing or left wing, and my politics and my own business. But, uh, Do, well, does, I, does it ever make you angry? Do you ever oh, come out of shows? Yes. Yeah, so well, last year was real funny. I should have known better. It's sort of like you know, you start talking bad about my brother, I'll get mad. Right. So we went, last year I went to see uh, a show called uh, Hey Nicaragua. It was put on at the Nelson Mandela Theater by the AK-47 Theater Group. Well. You know, I'm with the United States Air Force, and well, I should have known better when I went into this, with this show, and I was glad I didn't have a big sign saying USAF, you know, because they probably pulled me into the play and started, you know, denigrating me and, and everything. You know, but, you know, the, the play was a, was a good show, the, the actors were, it was a lot of fun, but I felt a little uncomfortable because it was sort of like you saying bad things about my brother, you know, I may agree with you, but, but yeah, you can't say, know, but you can't exactly. say that. You know, I can say it, or another American can say it, but for a Scottish actor to say these bad things, I, you know, I, was, I didn't particularly like it. The litter in Edinburgh is vertical and replenished every day. 
One memorable year, the town took its revenge when exasperated burghers disappeared the entire facade of the fringe administration office, including doors and windows, under a 48-sheet poster reading, this is what you do to us every year, how do you like it? Here on the piazza by the National Gallery of Scotland, only a scone's throw from Prince's Street Gardens with its bandstand and floral clock, undiscovered geniuses and talentless maniacs cavort side by side. Hello. What's your name? Mr. Pickles. Uh, how do you do? I'm doing fine. Yeah, well, what kind of uh, audiences have you been getting here? Oh, really good ones. About 100, 150, or 50 like today. Good right. ones. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, you're very attractive. Huh? Well, I think <laughs> I didn't like saying that in front of all these people. Oh, but... Yeah, it is kind of embarrassing. Yeah. <laughs> as it has been for the last two guys. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you done a lot of television appearances? Uh, no, is this my first one? I'm uh, on TV. <laughs> Where are you from, Miss Pickles? Ah, uh, from Texas. From Texas? Yes. Well, where whereabouts? In Dallas, as a matter of fact. From Dallas, really. Have you been in Dallas? Uh, of course, yes, yes. <laughs> <You're>... <laughs> well, it, well, who's working you, Miss Pickles? Where, who are you really underneath all that? Yeah, underneath all this, um, not quite as oh. astounding as it, but it does. Well, there you are. Um, so, 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 what's your name? I'm Drew. You're Drew. Drew. Hello, Drew. You? John. John. Yeah. How's it going, John? So, fine. Is this your first fringe? Yes, definitely. Right. I heard about it about a week before thing. So really? I come up here. How did you hear about it? Were you in, 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 in London or something? Yeah, I left my friend that was busking with at the time and had no home, no place to go. Right. So I came here. Well, do, you, do you do this in, in Dallas? Actually, it comes from an improvisational comedy troupe right. called Deranged Durang. That was in <laughs> Dallas. It was part of that. You know, right, right. 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 Fringe goers get lost a lot and miss their connections a lot. But they're not tourists, they're travelers. To be one requires open-mindedness, patience, and sensible shoes. The journey is often thumpingly boring, occasionally unpleasant, but when you hit lucky, there's nothing to touch it. I was scheduled to experience an hour of Taoist meditation in a gym in Fountain Bridge in the company of Stephen Fry and Hugh Laurie. I was late, but Hugh Laurie never turned up at all. An artist What time to start? Um, Reliable, is he? No. <laughs> <laughs> the least reliable person I've ever met in my life. <laughs> well, uh, um, well, let's. Should we? Do you think? I think. Yeah. Okay. Right. Right. So, um, four compliments. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Before each sequence, I will illustrate a saying from it in such a way that you actually experience my kind of meditation. As I'm uttering this saying, I will reveal to you a body in the universe, male, human, from this time, this place. And the saying from the meditating fortune giver is, outpouring from that Deep compression like flames here into eternity. In order to get a deep appreciation of this saying, I invite you to join me in a meditation by finding your pulse beat, either in your wrist or in your neck. Imagine you are collapsing down in, into yourself. Energy compression. Diffusing outwards. Then returning into itself. 
perpetual cycles, heartbeat to eons. Let me not resist this return despite the glamour. Knowing the real oppositions, rhythms of universe flow in my heart, can always be got back to. Not concerned with outer image, do the comfortable for the circumstance, an attitude threatened with a bad end. But meditation centers equal within all goodness and all badness. Depths. Well, in a strange way, I feel um, that I was invited to go and see something which, on bare description alone, was classically ridiculous, which is mm. to say a man naked, leaping about, and going, eat, nip, what, but, a lot. But then, one doesn't know the rules when you start. Mm. It's a bit like cricket, if you describe people uh, leaping about in white, throwing um, leather spheres at each other, it does sound ridiculous. And when you know the rules, it's quite absorbing. And mm. As far as I could tell, the rule of this fellow was in a way that there aren't any rules. It was a bit like just staring at a fire or standing on the seashore looking at the sea. You wouldn't necessarily want to do it for an hour. Well, yes. How old do you think he was? About 50-something? say 50, with not an ounce of superfluous fat yeah, on his entire body. And that cannot be said of me. I've got um, fatter eyelashes than he has in his thighs. <laughs> Extraordinary. <laughs> it's a shame we decided to walk through a sort of motocross run. Is that you? Go. You? What are you doing here? Um, We're nearly five minutes late. Yeah, well, I, I'm sorry. I had to, I had to go fishing. Uh, I just couldn't get out of it. You know, I. Sorry about that. Your rod is where? <coughs> what well, fishing rod? Yes. Um, well, I, you know, I don't really believe in all that stuff. I, I prefer to use sort of argument and persuasion rather than violence. Really, yeah. it's been pretty quiet actually. So not, not much yes. is. Anyway, how, how was um, how was it? Well, well, just, well it was it was it was interesting. It was a kind of um, guy in the nude who uh, basically stood around in various curious positions and um, kind of went. He knows they're cool. He knows they're clear. <laughs> but what he doesn't know is that now they're even mintier. Silly boy. Fox's Glacier Mints. Now 10% more minty. Ah, it's Branston. Priceless. Bring out the Branston, the original sweet pickle. Any day from any moment.
At the Edinburgh Fringe, you think you've gone mad till you see your first good show. And it was 11 and a half hours before I found one that I unreservedly enjoyed. He gets comments are there. Please feel good. I bet you do. It was promoted promisingly as See Victor and Barry and Faint. We are your host. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good Welcome evening. to Victor and Barry Say Goodbye. Now, we don't really need to introduce ourselves, do we, Vic? No, because we're mega famous. We're famous, <laughs> let's face it. But for those of you out there who've never heard of us, Victor, will you do the honours? I haven't even done the ordinary yet. Ah, uh, <laughs> I'll be intellectual joke yeah. here to get us going. <laughs> they didn't get in there. <laughs> Not many degrees in the audience tonight, obviously. <laughs> My name is Victor McIlvaney. Correct. What's funny about that? <laughs> and I, I am Barry McLeish. We are Victor, Victor and Barry, founder members, founder members of the Kelvin Side, Kelvin Side, Amateur Dramatic Society. Society. <laughs> the foremost amateur musical company in the whole of Scotland, if not Glasgow. <laughs> We're from a place known as Kelvin Side. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. We're well known faces in Kelvin Side. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. We're known as the trendy thespians. Some of our best friends are less well known than us. <laughs> Have you finished? <laughs> I don't take a good tan, but I'm a Kelvin side man. He's a man from the Kelvin side. My loaf is a pan, I'm a Kelvin bread man. It's very witty there, oh, isn't so it? witty. We're from a Western old Kelvin side. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The things we like best about Kelvin side. There's yuppies and you go reach out there Who eat croissants and broccoli geese out there My flute is I am a Kelvin side man He's a man from Kelvin side I get fish from a fan I'm a Kelvin side man We're just two guys who try to do our best We're so surprised at our success Two boys made big and that's the size of it we're so theatrical, some people would move away if they had to pay the kind of rates we pay. But we're here to say Utopia is on our doorstep. Carol inside is it. I get what you're needing in Carol inside. Definitely. A garden of Eden is Carol inside. So true, so true. Even Eve and Adam would feel at home With all the big plants and all the garden gnomes No more rainbows to chase It's an oasis of taste It's one heck of a place That's why we're Kelvin Got a lot of complaints. Oh, it's it's all stand-up comedy this year. Or or I saw I saw some jaded poser from the face on Muriel Gray's program the other night saying that oh how terrible the music was and he thought that at least there'd have been a seminar on Acid House. Well, yeah. if he wants a seminar or something, or if he wants other bands on, then he puts them on. That's that's the way this place works. You know, the great thing about Edinburgh is that it's a it's a party that everyone's invited to. And if yeah. you want to come and do something do something and yeah. I think the fact that there's a lot of comedians around it, it simply reflects what's happening in the country you know ten years ago everyone wanted to be a rock star and now everyone wants to be a, a comedian or the young kids who once would have gone into music are going into comedy and in five years time it'll be different up here but what you get in Edinburgh simply reflects what's happening all around uh, England and Scotland at the moment let's talk a bit about talent spotters Pete because um, it seems to me that some of the television people come up because it's easier to come up here on a sort of a binge and a bit of a holiday 
and see all the people that really they could have seen in London yeah, all the time. I, I, well, I'd agree with you on that and uh, mention no names, but uh, yeah, I have seen telly people seeing acts that they could see every night of the week in London. And um, I, I don't really see the point in that. I mean, what I've tried to do this, you know, not that I'm talent spotting, I've just been trying to see shows, but I've avoided going to see people I know and I've avoided going to see all the acts you can see in London or in Brighton where I live. And I've tried to see a lot of overseas stuff, the Americans, the Georgian company from the Soviet Union doing Don Juan was fantastic. Mm. Um, and I've just tried to see things that normally you wouldn't get a chance to see. How did you get here? Anyway. One thing you wouldn't normally get a chance to see anywhere else was George Takai, the Californian actor best known for his role as Mr. Sulu in Star Trek, doing a serious two-hander in which he speaks only Japanese. How come the sharks didn't get you? Because they've been eating so many jabs, they got it coming out of their ears. Who was that, your buddy? What happened? Did he get sick or... Did you have a fight? Sucked it, sucked it. It's about a Japanese soldier marooned on an island together with an American GI during the Second World War, uh, during the latter part of the Second World War. Two people that are polar opposites, politically, culturally, linguistically. We don't speak the same language. We don't have a common language and the age gap there. And yet we discover that in order to physically survive on this island, we need each other. We're interdependent on each other. The undertow of the title is, however, that very difference of culture, mm -hmm. history, values that Keeps plays back, on yeah. us. And the resonance, of course, is on, on the larger sphere. Uh, we have today two great adversaries. You know who and you know who. <laughs> we need each other. The thing that interests me is you, you actually you live in L.A. Right? Yes. And you, you've been seen, you must have been seen now by literally billions of people in the world. <laughs> I mean, literally billions. I and, guess so, And yes. lovely, lovely L.A. weather, and you come to this dingy, wet, horrible, damp place, and you had, I think tonight, there were 76 people in your audience, which is full. It was absolutely jammed. 76 sold out. We have had sold out. Sold out every night. But what, what leads you to do that? Well, you talked about this weather. You know, I live in uh, sunny, boring California. And you, your weather is hardly uh, characterized as boring. Yeah. You, we have about uh, seven different seasons in one day, don't we, here? Yeah, we, do. it's, you, we can have glorious, golden, sparkling sunshine at 11 o'clock. And by 12 o'clock, it's pouring rain. Yeah. And then at 1 o'clock, it's chilly and freezing. You know, so I love it. I think this is the most stimulating and varied uh, climate that you can have. Right. But what brings me here during this uh, time of the year is, of course, the festival. It is a bit dazzling three weeks that you have here. The wealth of cultural offerings here. I, I keep thanking everybody here that theater is not fattening because I am a glutton and if it were, I'd go back. Uh, British Airways wouldn't let me on that plane. I'd be so <laughs> overweight. <laughs> As the evening gathers momentum, the bars empty and refill like rock pools in a foaming ocean of lager. The town vibrates to a distant roar, which could be applause, or centurion tanks rumbling up the cobbles to the tattoo, or frustrated Americans drumming their visa cards on the doors of the shuttered kilt shops. More likely, it's communal indigestion, the rumbling of ale past a hundred thousand larynxes. Being itself liberally sprinkled with other actors, the audience is a professional. It may drink a lot, but it always turns up for the show. I'm wet and I'm moist, so come on, let's rejoice. In the birds, the trees, the fillies, and the gods. And the fact that we are all young adults, my baby. And lie back on your couch, after this there'll be no doubt. I don't care if you're a miss or a missus. You don't 
convinced, quelched by the world's best kisses. Ho, ho, sit up straight and bow. I'll suck your face until I pull your wisdoms out. My tongue's so grand, you call me more than friend. A one kiss from this, you'll never brush your teeth again. Well, go back to your husband now. Tell him you done broke your vow. Stand proud and say, hey, mister. That was bloody impressive. I've just been kissed by the world's best kisser. Ho, ho, sit up straight and bow. I'll suck your face until I pull your molars out. I've done so long, it really grows and grows. Put it in your mouth and it'll clean out your nose. I've only kissed one girl before, my grandma on the kitchen floor. She dribbled and grinned and said, hey kid, you taught me things your grandpa never did. She added there'd be hell to pay if Ma found out we'd gone astray. So hurry Paul, go and get some sleep. You finally got a skill to teach the sheep. Hey, hey, come down and fuck her up. These lips are strong enough to stop a truck. A tongue so long, it really packs a punch. One kiss from this and I'll know what you had for lunch. One kiss from this and I'll know what you had for lunch. Yesterday. <laughs> Fringe audiences are a game bunch. They have to be. They're often cast as the lead. All you're gonna do now is get everybody to stand up. Come on, everyone, please. Everyone up. Come this isn't a drill. Let's I've go. been to performances where not... members of the audience spontaneously strolled onto stage and joined in the plot. I did it myself in 1973 where, to the astonishment of the cast of the Footlights Review, and to my instant and lasting regret, I gate-crashed their closing number at the head of 15 unscheduled Tarzans. I've been to plays where the audience, unbeknownst to me, was composed entirely of members of the cast, and I went to one performance where the audience consisted solely of 32 Taylor's dummies. Let's just take a quick peek into the women's toilets now and see what's happening in there. Get out of here, please! Now, the, people, the camera's coming in here, you can't do it. You as well, please. Isn't it, Gerald? People hide from you. People hide. What are you staring at? Get, get down the stairs. Come on, get going. Come on, this is nothing to laugh about. Everyone out of the venue, please. Keep moving, keep moving. If you don't want to be on the camera, just duck down, just duck down low. The flat top, badly done, but still, and a lovely little scar on the back here that's been accentuated by the, by the haircut. Keep moving down the stairs, please, everyone. It's not personal insult time here at all. Keep moving. Football jumper. Fashion god. Let's go, please. Lex Gibby, fashion god. Where were these people last five years, eh? Come on, everyone, down the stairs. Down the stairs. We're having a lovely time here. Please. She's out. She went down. Keep moving. Come on, everyone. We're going to really move you out. I think people are so reluctant in this country to, to be put under any pressure at all to, to react in any sort of way. It's a sad and tragic state that Britain is in at the moment. Come on, just everyone move, please. Try to get them all out of the venue now. See how slow and reluctant they are. Come on, people. These are the same people that won the Great War. It's tragic when you see them now. Come on, everyone, let's get out of here. The audiences put up with this kind of bullying because they can give as good as they get. Just be careful where you stick that shotgun microphone, mate. Will you? <laughs> something really special now. We stood on all the Christian youth groups and we are kids. Everyone moving really tight, packing Crunchy, really scrunch close. close. This is going to be wild and fun. Be careful of the cameras because they could get broken now. This is danger time. We call we it a trust exercise because it'll probably hurt you. <laughs> now what I do basically is I fall onto you people and you pass me along your hands. Here we go. Put your hands up. Put your hands up. Catch him. That's the way. The, the reason people like this don't get torn limb from limb is that a fringe audience has subtler and crueler ways of wreaking vengeance. They may bide their time and take it out on someone else entirely. One evening this year, an audience largely made up of alternative comics brutally savaged the university review. They booed them off, 
Then, when they appeared to relent, the group unwisely reappeared, to the delight of the audience, who played along for a few moments and then booed them off again. Everyone, lift your arms up to heaven. Reach up, reach to the heavens, people. Touch God's bottom. <laughs> Pull the little hairs out. <laughs> Those white ones. Now we'd like you all to yell, We hate the Doug Anthony All-Stars. We hate the Doug Anthony All-Stars. Thanks, Edward. <laughs> we'll see you later. You've been fantastic. Have a good night. Good night. 1am, a remote suburb of Edinburgh. In quieter months, here reside bagpipe salesmen, shortbread consultants and ladies who design cute nylon goats for the duty-free shop at Glasgow Airport. But tonight, somewhere in this house, are two sets of Marx Brothers, a Freud, a Jung, a dead Marilyn Monroe, between four and ten Hamlets and Greta Garbo. You haven't seen a guy called Mark, have you, anywhere? As well as a man who promised to introduce me to five Sylvia Plaths. Mark! This is Sharon. Hello, Sharon. Hi. You must be the Sylvia Plath, are you? I am the Sylvia Plath. Are you? Sylvia. But where are the rest of them, and who is everyone else? Are they perhaps the people who've been here for three weeks and never had one review? Or the members of an unfortunate ballet company reviewed by the gardening correspondent of the Scotsman? Or perhaps they're the people who lost their nerve before their first night and have been hiding here ever since? I can't say I care. It's too old for this. <laughs> Perhaps it wasn't a party at all, but the mythical watering hole where Richard Harris's understudies come to die. You won't have to worry, cause I won't leave you so well. I may not seem the type for kissing. The end of the day and the end of another fringe. I well, I never had so much as a sniff of Greta Garbo, but I don't care. Apparently he's Brazilian and speaks only Portuguese. It's three o'clock in the morning, but the Fringe always has some new surprises in store. Go head to toe. Why not try me soon? Oh, you'll never know. changed at the fringe in 15 years it's got a bit more professional a great deal bigger but the main difference is the food now there's international cuisine available but when i first came here you chose between haggis and chips cheese baps or the ubiquitous bridie a sort of pus filled pastry bag that squirted fetid air onto your shirt if you bit it which reminds me i haven't eaten all day and you leave off the phone well, I know you will love my bedtime stories If you play our cards right I can be yours tonight And you won't have to worry Cause I won't leave you soon Well, I may not seem the type kissing When I turn the lights away 3.30 and it's all over by the shouting. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to venue 187. Please put your hands together for Britain's first born-again Christian striptease artist, Mr. Pete McCarthy. Well, perhaps I could just give you a leaflet. <laughs> <laughs> 